Question 2.1 consists of six finance questions that were designed to assess your understanding of income, expenditure, profit and loss. It's stated that Martha decides to start a new business venture and bake chocolate muffins. She sells the muffins for 25 rand each. Her only fixed cost is paying her 16-year-old niece 500 rand a month to maintain the business social media page. A variable cost includes the ingredients and the electricity. She calculates that the variable cost per muffin is 15 rand. In question 211, you are instructed to define the term fixed cost in the given context. Here the given context part is important and simply writing down the general definition of the term fixed cost won't get you the full marks. You have to define the term fixed cost in the context of this muffin business. A fixed cost is defined as the cost that is constant or stays the same despite how many muffins are produced. In this context, it is the 500 rand that she's paying her niece per month to maintain the social media page of the business. In question 212, you have to explain why electricity is classified as a variable cost. The variable cost can be defined as the cost that will change depending on how many muffins are produced. So the more muffins that are produced, the higher the variable cost will be. In question 213, Martha states that she will make 1,500 Rand profit if she sells 200 muffins. You will have to verify showing all calculations whether a statement is correct. Now the profit per muffin sold will be the selling price of 25 Rand minus the cost price to produce that one muffin of 15 Rand and this equals a profit per muffin of 10 Rand. Now the profit for selling 200 muffins will be 200 multiplied by 10 Rand profit per muffin minus the fixed cost of 500 Rand for the management of the social media page and this equals a profit of 1500 Rand. Since the calculated profit for selling 200 muffins equals the profit amount stated by Martha, you must make a statement in your answer that the statement is correct. Not making this law statement will result in you losing one mark. In question 214, it is stated that Martha performed calculations and drew up a table showing the total income and expense to make and sell muffins. The information is provided in table 2. You are instructed to use the answer sheet provided to complete the line graph for her business expenses. On the graph, we see that the line graph for the income has already been constructed. To draw the line graph for the expenses, we first plot the points of the expenses and the respective number of muffins as listed in the table. You then have to join the dots to form the straight line graph for the expenses of the business. In question 215, you are instructed to use the graph to determine the total number of muffins that Martha must sell to break even. On the graph, the point of intersection of the two line graphs represents the break-even point. The break-even point is the point where the income and expense are equal for a particular number of muffins produced and sold. At the break-even point, we see that the number of muffins that must be sold to reach this point is 50 muffins. In question 216, it is stated that while researching the selling price of muffins, Martha came across a 4-pack of muffins for $4.98. You are instructed to calculate the price of one muffin, rounded to the nearest rand, if the current exchange rate is $1 equal 15 rand 53 cents. Firstly, you will have to calculate the cost of a 4-pack muffin in South African rands. To do that, you have to convert the price of a 4-pack muffin from dollars to rands using the exchange rate given. Next, you will have to determine the cost of one muffin by dividing the price of the 4-pack muffin by 4 muffins. So the price of a 4-pack muffin in South African rand is equal to the conversion factor of 15 rand 53 cents multiplied by the cost of a 4-pack muffin in dollars of $4.98 and this equals 77 Rand, 3394 cents. 
Now the cost of one muffin in rands equals the cost of a four pack muffin of 77 rand comma 3394 cents divided by four muffins in a pack and this equals 19 rand 33 cents. Rounding this to the nearest rand will give you a cost of 19 rand per muffin. Question 2.2 consists of five finance questions that were designed to assess your understanding of payslips, pension funds, and medical scheme contributions. You're given a payslip of a part-time lecturer at a local university in Annex A. The payslip lists identification details as well as the earnings and deduction details of the lecturer. In question 2 to 1, you are instructed to write down Mr. Clutie's employee number. From the payslip on Annex A, the employee number of Mr. Clutie is 2500453. In question 2 to 2, it is stated that Mr. Clutie contributes 9,2% of his basic salary towards his pension fund every month. You are instructed to calculate the missing value A, which is Mr. Clutie's monthly pension contribution. From the payslip, the basic salary of this person equals 15,000 Rand. So his pension fund contribution is 9,25 divided by 100 multiplied by 15,000 and this equals a pension fund contribution of 1,387 Rand 50. In question 2 to 3, you are instructed to calculate B, the total deductions as shown on the payslip. On the payslip, B equals the sum of these values. This equals a total deduction of 6,892.50. In question 2 to 4, you are instructed to calculate C, the net salary as shown on the payslip. C equals the difference between the basic salary and his total deductions. This would give you a net salary of 8,107.50. In question 2 to 5, it is stated that Mr. Clutie is considering changing to a different medical scheme for him, his spouse and their two children. He finds the following option online. Mr. Clutie states that this will be a financially beneficial option. You are instructed to critically comment on his statement by showing all necessary calculations. From the values in the table, his monthly contribution will be 1,416 Rand for himself as the principal member, plus 1,416 Rand for his spouse as an adult dependent, and 366 Rand multiplied by 2 for his children. This will give you a total monthly contribution of 3,564 Rand. Now finding the difference between his current medical scheme contribution of 3,680 Rand and his possible new contribution of 3,564 Rand and this will give you a difference in cost of 116 Rand. Since this positive amount means that you will be saving 116 Rand per month, you can state that it will be a financially beneficial option as his total monthly contribution is less. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And if you found this video helpful, you can subscribe to be notified of more videos like this. And you can check out this video next.